Hello and welcome to another Rightly Witterings. And I've been working hard today. I'm exhausted. Well, I've just got time to make a film before going back to do a bit more work, really. Hey ho! I have acquired a new toy. It's rather an elegant toy. It's rather a beautiful toy. I've got this one too. So you've got these two things and one of them has suffered a horrible accident. Shocking. Let's have a look. You'll be glad to see I have a cup of tea as well. It's not just whiskey. Right. What have I got here? I have two pretty much identical pens. In fact, it's incredible how identical they are. Apart from one detail, which is the nib. Here you go. This nib obviously looks like a terrible accident has befallen it. Some people who know fountain pens will think, oh no, that thing fell on a quarry tile. But that's not the pen that's injured, actually. No, it's this one. Because this was my son's for a while, and as you can see, he chewed it to pieces. But these two pens are remarkably similar. They look similar. They have similar designs. They both take the same Lamy or converter that's designed by Lamy. But this black pen is not a Lamy. You can tell actually by the cap, because Lamy caps or Lamy caps have these big springy things. Whereas this little pen is a Jinhao. And it has a rather elegant flat little clip to hold it in place. So Jin Hao, what do I like about this pen? The very first thing I like about it is it's incredibly cheap. It was, <clears throat> excuse me, I think £3.50. It's pretty much identical in every dimension to the Lamy. But I have to admit, the plastic has a slight roughening to the exterior, which to me feels better than the Lamy. Matter of taste. I also much prefer this clip. That feels really, really good. This clip is probably weakened and damaged by some use by my son, but uh, hey-ho. But the clip feels good. It's not particularly smooth around the edges, but who cares? It's really, really cheap, this pen. The plastic, as I say, feels good. The top is plain. Just a button to hold the clip in place. The bottom has this strange recess. If you take the cap off, it will post. It is not a heavy pen. Just looking at the Lamy. Yes, in exactly the same way as the Lamy, it is chamfered at the top, but the bottom on both is round. Don't know why, actually. I'd rather prefer to have three chamfered positions, but never mind. OK, so the main thing about this pen is that's very, very strange nib. So let's just look at it again. Here you go. You can see that it's been bent. The two tines have been bent at the end to point up at about 40 degrees from true. Very odd. Why are they like that? Well, it's because this is a Fuda pen. Now I know at this stage that some of you are staring at the screen and saying, what is he on about? Well, this is a Fuda pen which is used in Japanese and Chinese writing to get a sort of a similar effect as you would have from a brush pen. So you can have really quite fine lines if you want them. But, if you roll it back a bit, you get much, much thicker lines. Now, 
Now, what exactly does that do? Well, it means if you're doing all these strange symbols and the like, it's really very good. So it's ideal for something like Gothic writing. Not that I can do such things, but that is just a way of showing. You can get very fine lines, you can get ridiculously thick lines. Do I need a pen for writing Chinese or Japanese characters? No, I don't. Do I need a pen for writing Gothic characters? No, I don't. Do I need this pen in any way at all for writing anything? No, I don't. But what I do like about it is that you can use it to do all kinds of sketching. I've got a few examples here. I am not an artist. I like sketching, I like playing. But you can see here, you, you can get very, very thin effects and then you can start thickening up. So this is a building over the road which I wanted to give an impression of trees behind, but also just to bring the building forward a bit. So I left the building pretty much unshaded, left the trees darker. It worked nicely. I like that. Got another one here of um, some farm buildings in the middle of fields with trees all around from a walk the other day. And this thing works superbly well. I say again, three pounds odd. It's literally throwaway money, but it's not a throwaway pen because it comes with a cartridge converter. It comes with nothing else actually, it just comes with a cartridge converter. But look at it. It is almost identical in every way to a Lamy. Lamy are well built, they're well constructed. This is good thick plastic, it gives you the impression it's going to last for a long time. It takes Lamy standard cartridges and it takes a Lamy cartridge converter. There's a little rubber piece here so that when you tighten it up it always fits in the same place. Neat. The writing is done well. Everything about this really is extremely good. I really like this for sketching because an awful lot of people I've seen doing sketching, especially of big buildings, you can get really a very interesting set of effects with a pen like this that just gives you a way of quickly putting down ink in particular places and if you want to then you can watercolour in which is what I'm going to be using this for. Just a quick easy sketching pen that hopefully is going to be quite good fun to use. In fact, I thought about it so much, I've even bought some carbon ink to go in it. Now, you have to be really careful with carbon ink. This is Platinum's own ink. And when you look at the Cult Pens or the Pure Pens or any of the other websites, you will see they say, be really careful with this ink because it's got actual lumps of carbon in it. And when you've put it down on paper, it will stay there. That means if you put it down on your clothes, it will stay there. If you get it on your carpet, it will stay there. This stuff is standard Lamy uh, from a Lamy ink cartridge, and it's brilliant. It's nice, quite dark black ink. Flows really well in this nib, which I like. I do like this nib. It's really quite intoxicating in some ways. It's very strange just how appealing, a nib that gives such variety of um, impressions, because you cannot tell exactly how it's going to work at any one time. You can tell whether you're going to put down a thick line or a thin line just by changing the angle, but you can't be too sure exactly how well the ink's going to flow. So sometimes it'll come down really smoothly, other times it'll run out halfway through. But it doesn't matter. It's when you get this sort of variation here, which would drive me potty if it was a pen that I was using for writing with, but for doing sketching, that just means it gives the sketch some character and it gives it a bit more fun. Now, I can't use this ink when I am out and about doing sketching for line and wash, because the thing is, as soon as you get this stuff wet, it goes everywhere. It is hopeless. Let me show you. Lick my finger. 
immediately you get a smudge. This stuff does not smudge. This stuff is bulletproof, which is what makes it really, really good for sketching out in the wet or for sketching when you're going to watercolour or anything else. But it does mean you've got to be careful with your pen. If you've got a pen that costs more than three quid, I'm not so worried about damaging this nib and feed because I can get another one. But let's be realistic. This is a superb replacement for a standard pen that you might take to go out. Might be a Steidler, might be any type of pen. And the trouble with them is they are disposable. Now I've got a fabulous set of Copic pens. They are not disposable, but when you use them, the ink cartridge that comes with them comes in a big plastic packet with plastic bagging around it. So yes, the pen itself isn't disposable, you can keep using it for ages, but all the stuff that goes into it still has its own plastic and stuff. And I don't like plastic, I really don't like it because it fills landfills and I like my countryside to look pristine without a damn great hole dug in it being gradually filled up with rubbish sacks. This means I can carry this everywhere, don't care if I lose it, and I don't have to fill landfill because I'll be using this and that dark carbon ink. So, a strange pen, strange looking anyway, but really a joy to use. So there you go, two pens, one of them authentic, German made, Lamy, one of them authentic Chinese made, not Lamy, a Jin Hao. Do I recommend you go out and buy these? If you want something for sketching that is really, really cheap, there are lots of pens you can buy which will be very similar and probably cost three times as much. You can get pens from Platinum, I think, which are made in Japan. Lots and lots of them. I would personally ask you to go and buy them. Why? That is why. This is just a rip-off and copy of a Lamy. Everything about it. The dimensions, the little holes so you can see how much ink you've got, the size of the clip, the size of the nib feed, the fact it'll take standard Lamy cartridges. Everything about it is a complete rip-off. And I really get rather bored with seeing cheap Chinese copies of things where they're not paying any of the patents due, they're not paying for the right to copy things, they're just making direct copies and hurting all other companies that go through all the process of design and creation. So I really like this pen, it is superb, but I would beg you not to buy one of these, spend a little bit more and get something else. I bought this because I'd never tried a Fuda pen and I wanted to see how that nib worked. And when I saw it was only £3 something, I thought, I can't resist that. But it still leaves a bad taste in the mouth, knowing that there's workers at Lamy, for example, who could have been hired to make more pens, who now won't be hired because someone is just ripping them off. And on that shocking note, I'm going to go back to my whiskey. I am going to try to record another video for next week. I may not be able to. I'm working extremely hard right now. I've got to give a four-day course on creative writing for historical fiction next week at the Swanwick Writers uh, Summer School, which is going to be great fun. But it has taken a lot of time and effort because we've also had a computer disaster with my wife's computer falling over and losing 27 years worth of accounts, all of my book data, sales, figures, everything. It's not been a good few weeks. But, with luck, if I can crack on with this tonight, which I intend to, then hopefully tomorrow morning I can record another video for next week, and in that I will be looking at Platinum Carbon Ink, which you'd be surprised if I didn't loot, really, wouldn't you? Because 
why wouldn't I look at some carbon ink? Can't think. So, thanks a lot for watching. Hope that was interesting. If you enjoyed this, you can go to the bottom and click on a Patreon link and you can help support the channel. If you really want, you can join the Writerly Witterings Pen Pals Club, which has now got quite a lot of people in there. So if you fancy the idea of picking up your pen and actually making use of it, rather than just leaving it sulking in the corner, you can join the club as well. That's down the bottom. Apart from that, like it, share it, subscribe, hit the bell button if you want to be notified on future videos, and I will see you very soon when I've finished this whiskey. Bye-bye.